Hello folks and welcome to another edition of Zog Science. Today we're going to be talking about intermediate, in, intermediate inheritance, which is basically um, kind of an extension of Mendel's work um, and goes beyond just the simple dominant and recessive that uh, traits or uh, inheritance patterns that he came up with. So um, the, the three basic principles that we talked about in, in the introduction to genetics notes um, those are true for a you know a, a portion of the genes that we that we have um, and the traits that we have, but it's really not true for most of them. Um, the majority of traits are actually um, a lot of different types of inheritance patterns, which we're going to talk about today. So there are several different types. Um, the ones that uh, you're probably most familiar with would be codominant or incomplete dominance, but there's also things like multiple alleles, uh, polygenic traits, and multifactorial inheritance. So we're going to start off, we're going to talk about codominance. And codominance is a trait where both alleles contribute equally to the phenotype. Uh, an example would be coat colors in cows and horses. So what would happen is that a homozygous red cow is crossed with a homozygous white cow. Notice that we're not necessarily here talking about whether or not they are dominant or recessive because they are um, there, there is no dominant or recessive in this type. And what happens is that when they produce a heterozygous cow, it is going to be red and white, which is known as Rhone. Okay? And what we do when we write this is we put both alleles as capital letters to show the fact that this is codominance. Okay? So here's our red cow, which is big R, big R. Our white cow is big W, big W. And then the Rhone cow, which has a white and red coloration, it would be big R, big W. So that would be co-dominance. They are both being shown. So let's do a practice um, test cross. So we're going to take a, a roan cow. Uh, we're going to... Uh, so a red cow would be big R, big R. White cow would be big W, big W. Roan cow is R, W. So we're going to show a cross between two roan cows. Right? So there is our Punnett square. We got that nice and set up. All right, so these are our possible uh, genotypes that we could have. So if we wanted to figure out the probability that two roan cows will have at least one roan offspring, that would be, let's see, we got two of them, right? So that would be 50% or one half chance. And the probability that they would have a white offspring, right? That would be 25% or one fourth chance. Uh, another type of um, inheritance pattern is multiple alleles. Um, this is where a gene has more than two possible alleles. So in the normal dominant recessive pattern, uh, you just have the one, the, the op either options, it's either dominant or recessive. In this case, we're actually going to have multiple of those. However, you can still only have two alleles because you still uh, only have two chromosomes of, uh, of each type. So you're not going to be um, getting three or four of them. You still only get your two. Uh, example would be rabbit coat color. So it's got four different alleles. Uh, big C, little c, ch, little c, h, and little c. So the wild type color, this is where um, you've got the dominant, which is c, and you can see that anytime you've got your big c, whether whichever one it's paired up with, that one is always going to be dominant over all others. We can also have a chinchilla color, and chinchilla is the little c, h, and that is dominant to little c, but also to H, which is the Himalayan color. So in order to be Himalayan, you either have to be little c H, little c, or little c H, little uh, little c H. And then you've got albino, which is little c, little c. So you've got lots of different combinations as to what you can get, and you kind of have to be careful with these because you need to know which ones are dominant to which. So here's kind of uh, for practice, right? C is dominant over all others, so that's our wild type. Little c. Little C8, little CH <laughs> is dominant to um, Himalayan and uh, albino, and then uh, Himalayan is dominant to albino, and this should uh, be a little C. Little C is recessive to all others. Um, so let's do a uh, cross a wild type and albino. It's going to have a Himalayan baby, right? Okay. So in order for it to be a Himalayan baby, the wild type has to be big C little c h right because that's the only way that we actually would end up with a himalayan baby because the himalaya is dominant to the albino all right so uh, what is the genotypes of the parents we'll figure that out 
What's the probability that they will have an offspring that is Himalayan? That would be 50% because we've got two of them. Probability that they're going to be albino would be 0% because none of the offspring could possibly be that. And the probability that the offspring that is wild colored would also be 50%. Uh, incomplete dominance. Uh, this is kind of similar to co-dominance, but it's a little bit different. So what happens is that the heterozygous phenotype is a blend of the two homozygous phenotypes. So it's not going to be like the roan cows where you had a red and white spots both showing up, but rather you're going to have a brand new phenotype. Um, so an example would be Mirabilis or four o'clock plants and the coat color in horses. Um, so when a homozygous chestnut horse is crossed with a homozygous white horse, they produce a heterozygous tan or pal pal palomino horse, which is a new color type. So there's your chestnut right here. There's our genotype, or there's the white horse. And then this is our palomino. So notice that we have a new color type. It's not the chestnut and it's not the white. Uh, so let's do a, a practice one with the red flower. So the, what happens is that we've got the red, which is R, the um, white, which is little w, and the heterozygous condition is pink. And notice that instead of like instead of um, codominance where we had two capital letters, now we're going to have two lowercase letters to show that neither one of them is actually dominant over the other. So the red type genotype would be little r, little r, white plant genotype would be little w, little w. So we're going to cross a red with a white one, right? So our that would be all of our plants would be what color? They would all be pink. These would be considered hybrids um, because they are heterozygous and the phenotype would be pink. So whenever you get a new um, phenotype that you did not see in the parents, that's most likely going to be incomplete dominance. So um, this is what we could do if we had Mirabilis plants, right? We would take a white and a red, cross them together, we get pinks, and then we could cross the pinks, we would get back the white and the reds, um, and uh, yeah, you can see here that we, if we cross a big R with little r and then little r, little r, uh, we would obviously get pinks and whites, which makes complete sense. Uh, polygenic, these are a trait that is controlled by the interaction between two or more genes. Um, examples include skin color, high color, height, and hair color. There's no real um, Punnett squares that we can do for these because it's more than uh, one or two genes um, being combined. And because of this, uh, we get a continuum expressed phenotype. So that's why you can have people that are all considered, you know, white or, or black or whatever, but they all have slightly, slight variations in skin colors because it's being controlled by two or more genes. We also have multifactorial inheritance. Uh, this is a phenotype as a result of an interaction between your genotype and certain environmental factors. Um, the expression of most all genes is influenced by some sort of uh, environmental conditions. Um, so in a lot of ways, uh, most genes are uh, multifactorial. Some examples would be diabetes, right? So some people um, can get diabetes based on um, uh, getting a, uh, some sort of, um, there's a virus that can cause it um, as well as uh, eating uh, improperly. Um, height. So if you, um, some people, if they don't get the correct nu nutrients when they grow up, even though their genes might say that they could grow up to about six feet, you know, they could be shorter. Um, heart disease, um, certainly eating, you know, lots of cholesterol, high, high fatty foods and lots of cholesterol foods increases your uh, risk for heart disease. Um, so basically all these things, uh, you have, might have a predisposition for those, but you actually also have to have the correct environmental conditions in order to trigger um, them showing up. Uh, some examples in plants. Um, in many plants, the presence of light triggers the production of chloroplasts, and what do we know chloroplasts do? Chloroplasts are involved in photosynthesis, which it makes sense. If you don't have the light, what's the point in spending energy on making um, chloroplasts? Um, and uh, also, some plants only germinate in specific temperatures, so they only activate the genes that actually are going to begin to grow um, the seed um, when they're in specific conditions. And the tobacco seeds lab that we started um, uh, on Monday, that is going to uh, be looking at this idea of multifactorial uh, inheritance and the environmental conditions influencing the expression of genes. Uh, that's all I've got for you today, and I'll see you next time.